Welcome to another Arduino programming tutorial. In this video, we'll be discussing how to construct time sensitive while loops, or what I refer to as time sensitive while loops. Someone else may refer to it as something totally different, which is completely fine. But first off, what is a time sensitive while loop? Well, it's a loop that will perform a task for a set interval of time. However long you want the task to be, the Arduino to perform that task, that's what the particular control structure in this piece of code does. As it performs one task, say for five seconds, then it shifts over and performs a different task for three seconds, and then it loops back around and goes back to doing the other task for five seconds, on and on and on. And but it could just as well perform one task for a set interval of time and then you could do other things for however long it takes. What this particular coding structure is useful for is when you want a task performed for an interval of time but you and you don't really want to have to worry about how many iterations that task is performed during that interval of time. So you don't really care say if you were blinking an LED is your task that you won't perform for five seconds and you don't really care how many times the LED blinks so much as you just want it to blink for five seconds and then stop blinking or go stable and just be on and go do other things you have the Arduino perform some other task that's what it's good for in cases where you don't know the number of iterations that will occur within five seconds for example nor do you care how many iterations occur during that five seconds. You just know that you want it done for a certain interval of time, a particular task. And you want it to stop after that interval of time and the Arduino do something else. That's what time sensitive while loops are good for, is they're a solution to that problem. They're not the only solution or the only way to accomplish that behavior, but they are a kind of handy little code structure to have on hand at times. To see an example of this, let's upload this piece of code and open the serial monitor. And what we'll see on the serial monitor is two different sentences are printing. The first sentence is inside first while loop. And it prints for five seconds, and then this other sentence occurs. Well, there's inside the first while loop, then there's inside the second while loop. We're back inside the first while loop, inside the second while loop. And if you watch this long enough, what you'll notice is that this sentence inside the first while loop prints for a longer interval than inside the second while loop. Namely, this sentence is printing for five seconds and then it shifts out of printing that sentence and starts printing the other one for three seconds and this is just a serial example of performing tasks for specific intervals and jumping from one to the other after that interval is passed look at the code again so what's going on there is that we're having the Arduino use a while loop control structure which we'll look at in just a second to do something for five seconds and then after that five seconds has passed it exits one loop and then jumps into another while loop and then does something else for three seconds namely prints particular sentences to the screen relative to each of the loops jumps back and forth and back and forth you wouldn't have to have it jump back and forth it could just do that first sentence for five seconds and then do something totally different but that's what time sensitive while loops are good for. They're good for cases where you want the Arduino to perform a task for a certain period of time. You don't care how many iterations, like how many individual sentences it would print to the screen in that five seconds. You just want it to print that sentence for the five seconds. Or you want it to, for example, advance a stepper motor by one step for five seconds. You don't know the exact number of steps you want that stepper motor to go, but you know you want it to run for 10 seconds, 5 seconds, a half a second, etc. That should give everybody a, a sense of what this particular control structure can accomplish for you. And I'll have another video that I'll upload right behind this one showing it applied to the control of stepper motors. So you get an application in your 
mind immediately after this video. So let's start looking. The first thing we'll need is some global variables. We'll have one variable of the unsigned long type. Then it needs to be unsigned long because this is where we're going to be restoring a return value from that inbuilt function known as mills. And it returns an unsigned long value. So you want your variable that's going to be capturing and storing that value to match the type that it's returning. And I'm, I have just named it time since last reset because that's what the mills function returns. It returns the amount of milliseconds the Arduino has been running since it was initially turned on or since the last time the reset button was pressed. Like when you turn your Arduino on, it does a reset. That is the coming on of the Arduino is everything starts back at the top of your code. We're going to capture that number and use it as a reference throughout this code. But we'll just need an unsigned long type variable. You can name it something differently, initialize it to zero just for simplicity's sake. And then we'll have two, in this case, integer type variables because I'm not going to exceed a upper limit that an integer type can be. But you could just as well use a long or an unsigned long if you wanted this interval to be really long. If you wanted the Arduino to perform a task, say, for six minutes and then jump out, you'd want your variable to be of a type that could handle the whatever number that you need. And in this case, we're thinking in terms of milliseconds, a thousand milliseconds per second, first interval, interval one, is 5,000 milliseconds is what this will eventually come out to be. Or it's five seconds. That's the way to think about it. And we're going to associate interval one with a first while loop that we'll see below. Then interval two is 3,000, which is 3,000 milliseconds or three seconds. Then you could add as many intervals as you want. Moving right along in the setup, given that I'm using this as a serial example, printing stuff to the monitor, we have to initialize a serial connection. I did it at 9600 baud, brief delay, just to give that connection a little time to establish. Now to the interesting bit. What's inside the main loop or void loop, however you prefer to refer to it? We have our first while loop. And then we can notice we have your second while loop down here. You wouldn't have to have a second one, but in this example, I've used two of them just to show how you can jump back and forth between two performing tasks at different intervals. The first thing we'll do is we make a call to the mills function. What that function will return is the amount of milliseconds since the Arduino was first turned on or the last time it was reset. We'll collect that return value and store it in the time since last reset. That's going to be our stable reference point for this while loop. Is that'll be the unchanging number. It's the one we will use as the stable reference when we enter the while loop. Inside the while loop, it's test. The while loop always has to have a test in order that it's going to say, is this true? And if it is, I'm going to loop. If it's not true, then I'm going to stop or I'm going to go on to some other task. That's the way a while loop works, a lot like a for loop, except a while loop is good when you don't know the number of iterations you need. A for loop is good, say, if you know you want a task repeated 15 times or 20 times or 50 times, for loop's the way to go because it's just simple. It's very straightforward. If you know the exact number of iterations you need, for loop's the way to go. But a while loop is good when you don't really know the amount of times you want the task inside the loop performed or you don't really care. You just want it to loop for a certain period of time or you want it to loop until some other event occurs, maybe an interrupt or some values updated in some way. As soon as we enter the while loop in its test, we're going to call the mills function again. What will this return? The times, well, it'll return the time since the Arduino was last reset. Notice we froze that earlier up here. We, before we ever went in the while loop, we said, how long has it been since you were last turned on? For the sake of this example, let's assume it's been a thousand milliseconds. So we have 1,000 as our reference. Say 1,000. 
milliseconds has passed since the Arduino was turned on. In this case of this example, it's not going to be 1,000. But in other examples, it might be. You might have done a lot of stuff in setup, and it took time to do those things. So say it's been 1,000 milliseconds since the Arduino was first turned on. That's the number that's stored in our time since last reset. We called mills. It returned 1,000 milliseconds. We stored it in the time since last reset variable. Then, when we enter this while loop, we call the mills function again. We say, well, how long has it been now? Given that these are in the initial pass through of the main loop, this will be a very, these two numbers will be very close. It's like this number might, it could be 1,000. This one might be 1,001. Let's just add that in there. Say 1,001 and replace mills with it. That's the value it returned. Then what are we going to do? Well, we're going to subtract the 1,000 that we have stored in time since last reset from the 1,001. What will be the result? Well, a 1. That's the number you would have here. If you have 1,000 on our initial call to mills, then we call it again. And given that these two lines of code are executing back to back, it will initially be a very very little difference between the two numbers. Have 1,000 here, have 1,001 here. Well, 1,001 minus 1,000 will be 1. Then we ask, is 1 less than interval 1? Well, what was interval 1? Up here, we just started it out with 5,000. Is 1 less than 5,000? Yes. So what does the while loop do? It performs the task inside its brackets. There's the curly brackets for the while loop. And in this case, the task is to print the sentence inside the first while loop. This could be advancing a stepper motor by one step or 10 steps or whatever you desire. It could be blinking an LED. It could be collecting an input from a sensor. Say you want to collect the input from a temperature sensor for five seconds and then go do other things and then come back and collect it for five seconds more etc. Whatever you would need, you want, whatever your task is, you want it to appear inside that while loop. While loop test ended up with, we have the number 1 here, 1 is less than 5,000, so it's going to print inside the first while loop. It'll hit the bottom curly bracket, roll back up, and go back through the while. It'll say, okay, what time is it now? Well, say your task took 50 milliseconds. When we make our call to mills, it's going to say, what do you, we're going to ask, how long since the last time you were reset? It could return 1,051. Then we're going to subtract from that 1,051 our stable reference value, which remember was 1,000. 1,051 minus 1,000 will return 51. 51 less than 5,000? Yes, it is. So it's going to print inside the first while loop. Then it'll hit the bottom of the bracket, go back up to the while, and say it took 50 more milliseconds. Now we have 1101. 1101 minus 1000 will be 101. That'll be less than 5000. So it's going to print this sentence again. On and on and on until after five seconds has passed, where this number will return, the subtraction will be like, say, 5101 or 5050 will be the number that will come out of the subtraction. Well, that will be greater than interval 1, which is 5,000, so the while loop will stop. We'll exit the while loop, and this is just for display purposes. We, this is just printing empty spaces on the screen, and then it will jump into the second while loop. What do we do then? We get a new reference point. We make a call to Mills and we say, how long has it been since your last reset? For simplicity, let's just say that 10,000. That's the time since last reset. Your Arduino has been running for 10 seconds. And then we store that in time since last reset. Mills returns 10,000. We store it here. Then we enter the while loop and we call Mills again. The first time, this first initial move, as soon as we come from this line of code to this one, there'll be very little difference between this number and what's returned, what the number returned here. But as we make it through this loop, this number will be constantly getting bigger, as it should. We have Mills, say it could be 10,001 the first time it's called, 
Well, 10,001 minus 10,000 will be 1. And well, 1 is less than interval 2, which up above was set to 3,000. That means we'll end the while loop test will be true. 1 is less than, or yeah, 1 is less than 3,000. So it'll print the sentence, hit the bottom of the while loop, go back up to the top. Then we'll sample it again. This could be 10,050. So 10,050 minus 10,000 will be 50. 50 is less than 3,000. So it'll and it'll print the sentence inside the second while loop. And it'll do this until the value returned from this case of subtraction is higher or greater than interval 2. And just notice it'll do that and it'll give you the time you want. It may be off a few milliseconds. It may be... 3,002 milliseconds just to, that it takes before it exits this while loop. But if you don't really care if it's a millisecond or two off, you just want it for very, very close to three seconds. Like three seconds and a few fractions over three seconds isn't going to matter. This will work perfectly fine. And then we'll, and once that three seconds has passed, it prints two spaces to the serial monitor, just I've done that for demonstration purposes. Then it hits the bottom of the main loop and it goes back up to the top. That's all there is to the code. That's how it works. I'll put this code in the first comment on the video, but I hope this video has been helpful. I hope that explanation is helpful. If there are questions, just post them in the comments. I'll be glad to do my best to help. And also, for an application of this with stepper motors, check out my other video that's just been uploaded about how to control stepper motors with time-sensitive while loops. Until next time.